So you've been studying how genes change in humans, both living in the Andes and living in the Himalayas, but you were saying it's not the same genetic changes. That's true. In the Tibetan population, there's a locus that we all have called EPAS1 that codes for the hypoxy-inducible factor 2A that we already talked about. So this is a gene that makes a protein that responds when into low oxygen. Uh, or is involved yeah, it accumulates in when okay. we have low oxygen, uh, mm -hmm. when oxygen is low, when the oxygen sensor realizes that it's, it's under stress. And um, we see that among Tibetans, there is a very high frequency, 60, 70 percent, 80 percent in some cases, of alleles at EPAS1, e that is, forms of EPAS1, that are associated with a dampened hemoglobin response to so stress. So they they've had a mutation which has become more common, yes. and it makes your hemoglobin not go up that much when you go up to altitude. Mm -hmm. Actually, they acquired the mutation uh, from an ancestral population. Right, right. But and yes. actually a very peculiar population, too. Yeah, the Denisovans. The What's De a Denisovan? Uh, yeah, what, that's a good question. What is a Denisovan? We know uh, Denisovans were a very ancient human population that we know only from their DNA. In a little teensy bone about that big. In a little tiny finger bone, and now we have uh, DNA from a couple of teeth. So, uh, but that's it. I mean, we, we don't know. So they're kind of like Neanderthals or something, but. Well, yeah. they lived at around the same time, 50,000 years ago. Um, they're not identical to Neanderthals. Although lived in a whole different place. They, uh, Denisovans lived in Siberia, yeah. Mm -hmm. And if we look at uh, populations that are alive today, we see that uh, some populations in East Asia and in Melanesia in particular have some Denisovan DNA. And, and by so, total chance, right. uh, the t population that went to high altitude in Tibet from low altitude East Asia took with it some of uh, this Denisovan DNA at EPAS-1, and that turned out to be uh, a, the alleles that are adapted. So having a little chunk of a chromosome that happened to come from these Denisovans gave advantages to some individuals compared to others, That's right. and those individuals had more babies yep. than others did, and it became more and more common. Yes. But something different happened in the Andes. True. Uh, after arriving in East Asia, the human population made its way to uh, across the Bering Straits and into the New World. And in the course... Very uh, recently, really. Well, 14, probably 15,000 years, 15, years ago, yeah. yeah, in that area. And uh, then made their way throughout North America, through Central America, down to South America. And we know that there have been people living uh, at the altitude of Pikes Peak, yet in the Andes, for 13,000 years. So I've got to ask before we figure out how they got adapted to that, why on earth would they want to go up there? It's cold, it's hard to breathe, why not stay someplace warmer? Boy, you asked a good question. <laughs> and a lot of people have spent time speculating on that. In the Andes, there's an interesting set of data that suggest that the river valleys that kind of lead up to uh, the high plateau were inhabited earlier mm -hmm. and that there were occasional droughts. So water, fish, game, and reliable water. would be at higher altitudes. So the people mm -hmm. may have gone to these higher altitudes following game, following, uh, following the resources. And once they moved up there, they didn't feel so good, or at least they couldn't function that well at first. Some of them, yeah. There's variation. Some of them got acute mountain sickness, right? Some of them may have said, oh, I don't like this, I'm going home. Right. Other, others stuck it out for a few days and felt okay. So your work has discovered that there are these genetic differences between people living at high altitudes and lower altitudes, but they're different in different places. Yes. How come? Good question. Um, one quest one ex possible explanation is that, for example, let's compare Tibetan highlanders with Andean highlanders. Right. What happened uh, in between uh, 
right. getting to East Asia and getting right. to South America. Well, the uh, East a the low altitude East Asian population probably arrived around 100,000 years ago there. Uh, we know the Denisovans were there at least 50,000 years ago. And uh, we know that someone was living on the Tibetan Plateau occasionally around 30,000 years ago. Mm -hmm. So we have those time points. And the, we know that the Tibetans came from low altitude East Asia. So the hypothesis is then that by chance, the people who migrated to higher altitudes took some of this Denisovan DNA that was in the gene pool. But in terms of the differences between the Andes and Tibet, um, it sounds like there, it was just kind of almost randomness about which alleles were available to be selected on to make you adapt to higher altitude. Uh, and we think that that may well be the explanation. If you think of the process of going from East Asia, actually Northeast Asia, uh, smaller populations would migrate a little bit and a, that population might stay a while and grow, and another small population migrates. And as you migrate uh, bit by bit by bit, you get uh, a non-random selection mm -hmm. of the parental uh, gene pool. Now, let me rephrase non-random selection of the parental <laughs> gene pool, that some genetic variants that may be perfectly uh, adaptive or neutral, just get lost by chance. So let's make it simpler yet. Luck of the draw mm -hmm. explains some of yeah. these variations. It's the luck of the draw whether or not EPAS1 variants from the Denisovans made it, it made it to Alaska, let's say, or made it from Alaska to, you know, so every generation is a luck of the draw. Every move of population, the luck of the draw. And will, will natural selection always increase the frequency of a good gene? No. And this may be a case where a good gene got lost for random effects, and by the time the population got to the Andes or got to low altitude South America, but those variants weren't there, the mutation didn't occur. Right. So as the population moved to altitude, selection acted on a different set of alleles because they were there. So selection is pretty powerful and does its job slowly um, but it has to start with whatever it can start with, and that might vary. That's right. Let's go on in a minute to talk about differences between human subpopulations. Okay.